Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll take a closer look at the MVP or boss hunt build for Sorcerers. Sorcerers are very powerful against MVPs whether in the field, Endless Tower, or Oracle. Not only do they dish out continuous magic damage with their auto attacks, but they can also be left unharmed by boss monsters with their crowd control skills and high flee. Similar to our Professor Sorcerer farming video, this build will primarily use auto attacks. If you haven't watched that yet, I'll have the video linked down below. However, this time we'll introduce new skills, runes, and item combos which are more catered against minis and MVPs. We'll discuss in detail the recommended stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips for the MVP or boss hunt build. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, we'll start with a stat build. The most important stat to max first is Intelligence since it increases magic attack which is necessary for a higher damage output. Then allot 30 to 40 points on Dexterity to decrease the variable cast time of some of your spells. You may adjust your dex attribute depending on the variable cast time reduction items that you have. And lastly, allocate the rest of the points on Agility for faster attack speed and higher flee. Next, let's discuss the most important skills to get. For the mage skills, prioritize getting Lightning Bolt to level 10 for a higher damage against Water Element. This is because when fighting against boss monsters, we can use the Tidal Shoes and Silk Rope set wherein the target's element has a chance to be converted to water. Then get level 3 Frost Diver as a prerequisite to Water Field. And lastly, put points on level 10 Increased Spiritual Recovery for SP Sustain. As for the other skill points, allocation is up to you. For the Sage skills, you may get Level 10 Auto Spell for higher chances of triggering Lightning Bolt in your auto attacks. Level 5 Energy Code for increased magic damage and defense. Level 5 Free Cast to allow movement and auto attacks while casting a spell. And then Level 5 Earthquake as a prerequisite to Earth Field. Then max out Earth Field to Level 5 as this is very useful in cancelling out the AoE skills of MVPs such as Meteor Storm and Storm Gust. But to take note that this skill can also negate some of your own AoE skills, so timing this skill correctly is of prime importance. And level 10 upgrade book but only if you're using Sage Diary or its synthesis. For the professor's skills, you should prioritize getting level 5 quick casting for increased SP region and decreased variable cast time, level 10 mental agitation to reduce the target's M death while auto attacking. Level 3 Double Flurry as a prerequisite to Magic Fist and Level 5 Magic Rod for evading magic damage which is good for survivability. As for the rest of the points, you can allocate them on other Sage skills such as Level 5 Wind Field for additional Wind Element damage and flee and Level 1 Water Field since there are runes which can inflict frozen status on enemies within the Water Field rages. Thus, this is a very good crowd control skill for the summoned mobs. For the remaining skill points, you may put it on whichever skill you like. Once you've reached Job Breakthrough, you may allocate the additional skill points on the following. Level 15 Mental Agitation for increased magic penetration. Level 20 Auto Spell for higher chances of triggering Lightning Bolt when Magic Fist is inactive. Level 10 Energy Code for additional Ignore M Def. And Level 15 Lightning Bolt for higher damage output. However, if you're using a book as a weapon, you may choose to get level 20 upgrade book instead. Lastly, for the sorcerer skills, you should get level 5 magic fist to proc more bolts while attacking, level 10 sharpened weapon for higher magic attack, crit chance, and crit damage, level 10 summon elemental to summon the wind elemental creature to fight alongside you. It will increase your wind element damage as well as your flee. And lastly, get level 5 Warm Breeze for AoE Heal. As for the remaining skill points, you are free to allot them based on your personal preference. Now let's go to runes. Similar with the auto attack farming build, you need to get auto spell proficient, element concentration, wind damage, int, and agi runes for higher damage output. But aside from those, you also need the following runes. Fog Wall, which is a rune that reduces hit of enemies. Windfield Blast for faster attack speed when within the Windfield's radius. Earthfield Coagulate to petrify the summoned mobs. Waterfield Freeze, which has a chance to inflict a frozen status on enemies within the area of the Waterfield. And Magic Fist Agility for higher agi when using Magic Fist. 
Other optional runes to get are Magic Rod Empower for higher flea rate when using Magic Rod, Auto Attack Empower which increases Auto Attack bonus from Ints, and Crit Boost for additional crit damage when using Auto Attacks. As for the remaining contribution points, just allocate them on nearby Magic Attack nodes. Up next, let's dive into the recommended equipment set and cards. For soloing boss monsters, you need to use the Silk Robe and Tidal Shoes combo due to their set effect which gives the chance to turn the target into water creatures when you suffer auto attacks. In addition, upgrade these to tier 6 to activate another set effect which gives a 10% chance to turn the target into water element for 10 seconds during auto attacks. Once the target's element has been converted to water, Use auto attacks to proc lightning bolt in your auto spell. This elemental advantage would give us maximum damage. Take note that this set is only recommended for boss hunts and not for farming. Next, another difference of the MVP build from the farming build is that you will need to have higher flea rate. The goal is to get at least 610 flea with buffs in order to evade most physical attacks of the boss monsters. Survivability is more important so it is okay to replace some of your magic attack gears with equipment that gives flea. Some of the notable items that can increase your flea are Undershirt for garment which can replace your blue eve cape. Again, just find one with an arcane enchantment for higher magic damage. Upgrade it to tier 3 for additional flea. Whisper card for garment which gives plus 20 flea. Wild Gross card for foot gear which gives plus 2 agi and plus 5 flea. Small Ribbons headwear for plus 20 flea. Cramp card for headwear which gives plus 5 flea. Cutie glasses from the Feast Gotcha for plus 20 flea. Twin Katana back item from the Headwear Gotcha for plus 20 flea. And Nine Tails tail item for plus 5% flea. In addition, I'd like to highlight that you can get additional flea from enchantments. And lastly, if you have already achieved the desired flea rate, then you should equip items that increase your damage output such as two abysmal knight cards for your weapon as it increases damage to boss monsters by 10% each. Depositing another in your handbook can increase the damage to MVPs and minis by another 5%. Epic Spirit Lightning for plus 10% wind damage to amplify the damage of your Lightning Bolt. Refining it gives plus 1% wind damage for each refine level. As for weapon and offhand, the combination of Sage Diary and Telekinetic Orb would yield higher damage than the Wizardry Staff and Sacrifice Book. This because you won't need much ignore MDF stat when killing boss monsters as a result of the effect of the Mental Agitation skill. In addition, the Sage Diary and Telekinetic Orb set gives higher attack speed, elemental bolt damage, and auto spell chance. And lastly, aim to get the arcane fourth enchantment on your footgear and garment. Lastly, here are some tips you need to take note of when fighting against boss monsters. Tip number one: for your auto skill slots, just put in auto attack, magic fist, energy coat, and summon elemental. Then put earth field, wind field, fog wall. Warm Breeze, and Water Field in your manual skill bar. For boss monsters that don't have AoE magic spells such as Lord of Death, you need to avoid his physical attacks. Thus, you need to cast Wind Field, Fog Wall, and Warm Breeze first. Then activate your auto skills before attacking the boss. Make sure to recast the manual skills on time for survivability. However, if the boss monsters cast AoE ground magic skills, then use Earth Field instead. Remember that the Earth Field may also cancel your own AoE skills such as the Wind Field, Fog Wall, and Warm Breeze. Thus, use Earth Field in special situations only. Then for Oracle, you may cast Water Field to freeze the other mobs. Remember though that you may find difficulty fighting against MVPs with one-hit skills such as Firelord Kaho and Archangeling. In these cases, you may need a partner priest to use Faith Ray on you to avoid the one-hit kill. Tip number 2. For your item quick slot bar, you should put the following items. A Gristle Berry to restore all your HP and SP. Honey to restore 25% of your HP and SP. Panacea for removing debuffs such as Silence and Curse, 
Flywing for finding the boss monster in the field, and Apple Juice for SP region. Tip number 3. Aside from your equip items and enchantments, here are other things that can increase your flea. Self buffs using Summon Elemental increases flea by 100, and Windfield increases flea by 40. You need to practice casting these skills since your character might die if these are not casted on time. Next, you can also get additional flea from card deposit and unlock rewards from the Pouring Card, Orc Wire Card, Orc Archer Card, Nine Tail Card, Cram Card, Destiny's Card, Hold Card, Mars Card, and Miss Card. Next, we also have Headgear Deposit and Unlock Rewards from the Cap of Blindness, Small Ribbons, and Angeling Hairpin. And lastly, we can also increase our flea by using Agi Meals. Tip number 4. Before you start a battle, you may use any of the following items for faster kills. Original Will Juice for higher magic attack and M Pen. Original Will Green Kebab for higher magic attack and to survive death blows. Original Will Bra for faster attack speed. Int Mill B for higher magic attack and magic damage. Dex Mill B to help in decreasing variable cast time. Agi Mill B to boost attack speed and flee. Awakening Potion for faster attack speed. And Hurricane Controlling Alloy to increase wind damage. Tip number 5. And for my last and final tip, bring your Aboon pet. Her resurrection skill will make the difference between getting the MVP or having the MVP stolen from you. However, if you have a support priest to resurrect you, then just bring the Orc Wire pet since it increases your attack speed and has a taunt skill to hold the boss monsters. Alright, so far we discussed the stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips to hunt and kill the boss monsters using the auto attack build. I hope that this guide was helpful in setting up the foundation for your character. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching. See you in our next episode.